All right, in this video, we will talk about resistors in parallel. So what happens when you connect two resistors in parallel and how do you calculate the equivalent resistance? So I think this one is way more confusing and less intuitive for people than connecting resistors in series. So we're gonna spend a little more time talking about it. So if I connect two resistors like this, R1, and R2 in parallel. So again, I've connected them at both ends as opposed to connecting them in series, or I'll connect them at one end. And I would like to know the equivalent resistance if I measure the resistance of everything inside this box. And resistances in parallel add inversely. So what I mean by that is that the equivalent resistance is calculated using this equation. One over REQ equals one over R1 plus one over R2, and you can rearrange that equation to solve for REQ if you want, so REQ equals one over one over R1 plus one over R2, or if you wanna write it a little more compactly, you could write it like this, one over R1 plus one over R2 to the minus one, or you could write the whole thing as REQ minus one equals R1 to the minus one plus R2 to the minus one. So th those are all just different ways of writing the same equation depending on how you prefer to do your notation. And the point of all of this that we'll demonstrate with some examples with numbers in a minute is that you add more, as you add more resistors in parallel, the equivalent resistance goes down. So this is the part that's counterintuitive for people. You kind of automatically think, oh, I'm adding more resistors, so more resistors means more resistance and the resistance should go up. That's true when you add them in series, right? So we covered this in the last video. When you put a bunch of resistors in series, then the equivalent resistance does go up. So the equivalent resistance in this case is just the sum of all the individual resistances because you're stacking these in series and the current through all of them is the same, right? So every additional resistor you put on is adding more resistance for that current to go through. But the way to kind of think about this intuitively is when you put them in parallel like this, the current splits you are giving the current more paths to go through, kind of giving it more options and making it easier for the current to get over here. So the equivalent resistance actually goes down as you add more resistors in parallel. So if you keep adding more resistors, again, you can write this more generally. Say you have R1, R2, up to some number of resistors Rn, then you can write this using summation notation, where in this case, the equivalent resistance one over the equivalent resistance of that network is the sum from I equals one to N of one over RI. And again, if you don't like summation notation, you can just think of that as one over R1 plus one over R2 plus blah, 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 all the way up to plus one over RN. So let's again illustrate this with some examples. Let's take our 100 ohm and 47 ohm resistors from the previous video, but we are now going to connect them in parallel instead of connecting them in series. So 100 ohms, 47 ohms, what is our equivalent resistance going to be? And we're going to pull out our formula, formula one over REQ equals one over 100 plus one over 47. And when you punch in the numbers, and I'm just gonna do this in a calculator, I'm not gonna chug through all the math here, you get REQ equals 31.97 ohms. So again, this is the maybe counterintuitive part for people. That value is lower than either of these resistance values individually. You might have maybe expected something in between those values, or again, you might've thought, oh, more resistors means more resistance, so it's going to be bigger. But no, this value is lower than either resistor on its own. So if you again think back to the scenario where say you only have a bag of 100 ohm resistors and you have some target resistance value, say you need a 50 ohm resistor, but you only have 100 ohm resistors available as we saw in the last video. Say you could combine two of those 100 ohm resistors in series to give you a 200 ohm resistor, but you can also combine two of them in parallel to give you one over REQ equals one over 100 plus one over 100. And if you solve for REQ, in that case, you can get a 50 ohm resistor. So you can use your bag of 100 ohm resistors to get values that are both bigger 
and smaller than your individual resistor. You can also combine resistors in even more complex networks, say series and parallel, to get an even more fine-tuned range of values, and we'll cover that in the next video. But before we do that, let's look at one more example, again, where we are being careful about units and our prefixes. So say we have now a one kilo ohm resistor in parallel with our 47 ohm resistor. And again, we wanna calculate REQ. Using this equation, so that's gonna be one over 1000 plus one over 47. And if you plug that in and solve for REQ, you get that the equivalent resistance is 44.89 ohms. So the resistance does still go down in this case, but it doesn't drop anywhere near as much. It is still pretty close to this value of this 47 ohm resistor because adding a fairly large resistor in parallel doesn't decrease the total resistance that much. So again, the resistance does still go down, but it does not drop anywhere near as much as it did in this case when we had a 100 ohm resistor in parallel, which lowered the total resistance a lot more by adding another fairly low resistance path.